Welcome to the second part of the wonderful conversation we had with two stellar artists, Dridavrata Gorik and Deepti Agrawal. For all those who haven't watched the first part, please don't miss the interesting stories that uh, our guest of honor shared with us. So please uh, visit the link. The link will be in the description box below. So you can go and watch the first part and then come back to watch the second part. Uh, for a brief introduction again about our guests, uh, firstly, Mr. Dridavrata is a prodigious artist who strives to find spirituality through creativity. And Ms. Agrawal is a remarkable Madhubani artist and educator who found this gem of an artist and brought him to us. And she is giving us the wonderful opportunity to learn, uh, you know, the special um, Navatala form of uh, art from him. So let's welcome them both again. So happy to have you uh, here for the second part. Thank you. Thank you, Riti. So in the last part, we spoke about uh, your travels to India, uh, Dridavrata. Uh, but we also read that you traveled abroad, uh, specifically Belgium. Can you share with us uh, how was your journey to Belgium and your art journey there? When I was in Bengal and I was doing work um, with temple, temple architecture and different projects I had going on, um, I met uh, a person who was very interested in, in Indian art and he was actually the manager or the director of this museum I ended up working for. And he just um, somehow found where I lived and knocked on my door and he was the first one to actually purchase some of my original artworks. He just said, what do you have? And I want to buy whatever you have and uh, I want to make an exhibition with your artworks, you know, and that never happened to me before. So I was quite... Uh, you know, wow, that's that's amazing. And uh, yeah, I was looking for some option where I could uh, generate a little more income and, you know, maybe even just get a job. So this this person had, had actually, I had contact with the uh, director of the museum. I just thought, okay, maybe I'll just write to him and ask him if he needs some help in the museum, because I know a lot about art, you know, maybe that'll help. <laughs> so I had written to him and he uh, responded. He called me back actually five minutes later and he said, when can I book your ticket? Started off as a graphic designer because I had a little bit of a graphic design background. Um, so I was doing a lot of graphic design for him, art catalogs and such and helping with exhibition. Um, and because I had so much interest in especially Indian art and I was dealing with so many Indian artists, I just picked up, I was basically running the museum. <laughs> so I was dealing with a lot of um, the artists directly. So connect, you know, communicating with the artists, getting the artworks, exhibiting them, designing the, uh, the promotional materials and things like that. So that was quite a good experience because I was outside of India, but I still had a very strong connection to India through the art. Deepti, now uh, coming to you, how did you find uh, Dridavrata and how did this entire planning process come about for this uh, workshop? It was pure serendipity. Mm -hmm. um, I do this mindless uh, uh, browsing. <laughs> online <laughs> which all of us these days are guilty of uh, just go on the instagram and keep browsing and keep looking at things of uh, your interest and the algorithms are such that they show you things that you are interested in any in any way so uh, there was one time when i just uh, uh, just stumbled over over his handle and i kept looking and i found some very very exciting thing that he has done mm. um, the projects were very beautifully made and quite different from right. what I had seen otherwise. So I started following him hmm. and every time he would post something, it would show up on my feed and I would have that inner urge to learn from him. Hmm. So I did some research. I tried to go to his website and see if he was offering any classes, but I think this was pre COVID time. So there weren't any um, uh, online classes happening hmm. and it was all in person, whatever had to happen and him being in Belgium and uh, me being here in the US, it wasn't possible at all. Hmm. So I hmm. thought, uh, why not curate a workshop? So I don't learn alone, but learn with 100 other people together because mm -hmm. I was sure that because I'm interested and so deeply interested in learning from him, there would be people like me who also would be following his work and wanting to learn, uh, gain the knowledge, skills and a little bit of insight into what this art form is and how it is even practiced. The more, the more I talk about it, about uh, Humanities Washington, the less it is. Um, it was founded in 1973. It is a non-profit organization which is based in Washington 
It was founded in 1973 and ever since then they have worked tirelessly to open minds and bridge divides as they say by creating spaces to explore uh, different perspectives. Mm-hmm. They fund events like ours uh, to shed light on arts and culture and bring under spotlight uh, traditional arts and artists because they are the most uh, unsung heroes I would say. Mm-hmm. Um and we are very very grateful for their support. Mm-hmm. Um the other organization that I reached out to and that agreed to support us was uh, Friends of Asian Art Association which promotes interest understanding and support for asian arts and culture uh, and diti is there any way our viewers can uh, you know support these organizations absolutely we'll have the links down in the description box please go check them out uh, it is humanities.org and friends of asian art 3.org mm-hmm. both are non profit organization doing tremendous amount of work for art for the benefit of art and artists please do visit their website check out the work that they do and if you can please donate because it's the donation that keeps the art and artists going and helps us bring such invaluable programs to public at, at large adhridavrata can you please uh, touch upon what all will be covered in the workshop so that you know people watching uh, you know can gear up and get prepped uh, for the workshop yeah so um We'll be, we'll be talking, I mean, in the beginning of the uh, workshop, I'll be talking a little bit, you know, introducing the idea of Navatala system of, of proportion. Mm. And, uh, and then we'll start by actually uh, drawing out um, a form based on the Navatala system. Um, it'll probably be a, a form of a, a deva. I haven't decided yet. I'll keep that, uh, you know, <laughs> you guys guessing on that. Um, so we'll go through it step by step um and I'll explain along the way the different uh, steps and how to do how to measure out um and what are the different uh, you know um you know processes that we go through to measure a form um and you will be following along with me so I'll be drawing it out and talking about it uh, along the way mm-hmm. and of course if you have questions I'll try to go as slow as possible so that you know everybody can keep up with the uh, the process and since we have two day a two day workshop and i don't have to be in a rush to to complete it on the first workshop so that helps a lot um and then i'll talk a little bit about the parallel between the navatal system and the western um system of proportion and how they kind of relate uh quite closely mm-hmm. um and and also a little bit about the other tala systems and just about tala in general how how it works and things like that mm-hmm. so by the end of the the two day workshop we should have a finished form in the navatala system um and with that you could take it uh, further by painting it or if you like sculpture you could sculpt it so um yeah there's a lot of possibilities with that <laughs> Uh, Deepthi uh, and her team ran uh, a social media campaign um, uh, as a prelude to this event and a few winners were chosen and i think they had some quizzes and some contests and they chose these winners and uh, they get to come here today and join us and have a virtual meet and greet with our guest of honor uh, dridavrata and uh, i would be really happy to uh, welcome them all and invite them for the interaction so let's invite uh, the winners of the social media contests and uh, uh, we have here uh, sujata sanyukta uh, nitai and sangamitra uh, and we also have uh, vasika and uh, kush who are uh, you know part of uh, deepthi's team and uh, they've you know been supporting her uh, for this event uh, so welcome all of you and i invite you uh, to please interact with uh, dridavrata one by one and uh, share uh, whatever you have to say uh, so let's uh, welcome sanyukta do you want to go first sure uh, hi uh, dridavrata and all the great people here who are all artistic people um i i would not call myself an artist i'm just a student but i actually am from um uh, india i live in chicago right now i uh it's it's very enlightening to know about your art um uh, your name itself actually 
really brought me closer to the workshop and like a western has such a difficult name and uh, and such a prof- like such a deep meaning name to it you know uh, and the whole art form of like murti shilpakar and all those is really fascinating like every ganesh puja and every durga puja i get fascinated like how do they do this so nicely uh so i'm i'm really proud of uh, being part of the workshop uh, i'll try and learn what i can i had one question uh since you're doing uh, art which is very close to um divinism or god or uh, very close to like murti uh and for us in hinduism murti or um, you know idol is like really holy and you know really so did you in all your like uh, years in india have any like divine experience story or anything uh, at all uh, like with this art or of the art at all yeah thank you for asking and and welcome welcome to the uh, interview um Yeah no I definitely had some quite uh, unusual experiences um yeah I guess you can call them divine because they were just so hard to explain and <laughs> you know I would say majority of them were when I was in India because it was just I don't know India has this, this spiritual sort of um yeah it's it's you know, you're surrounded by spiritual you know spiritualism um so yeah beside art i also had a lot of my my own spiritual journey um coming to india i think uh because when i was a kid i did have i was connected to sort of hinduism through the the uh the hari krishna movement and things but i think it wasn't until i came to india that i really connected with the reason why i was practicing what i was practicing the whole cultural background the the um you know uh, the theory behind it and all that kind of and the history also so um yeah being in india traveling in india definitely i had a lot of very interesting experiences and also through the art um i guess like whenever i get a project proposal for example it's just it's so unusual because i i don't expect it and i just get people that just somehow connect with me even deep deep how she connected with me i had no <laughs> no idea i had thought in the back of my mind about doing workshops and i was thinking how to do it on my own and then dt just just gets a hold of me and says let's do it you know <laughs> so things like that have happened to me many many times i keep getting proposals for projects and many of them are ones that i've either thought about doing or that i really wanted to do and then suddenly someone will contact me so there's definitely some divine intervention there and um because the art is divine like you you were saying and there's this holiness to it um we were taught to treat it that way so um whenever we're um doing some new project i try to um be in that sort of spiritual mindset and i have, of course i have my own sadhana like my own spiritual practice that i do every day and you know meditation and different things like that um so i think that kind of helps to keep me keep that mind frame you know Uh thank you Sanyukta for your question and thank you Deepthi again for uh connecting us to Dridavrata and bringing this workshop to us. Uh let's uh welcome Nitai uh, Sharandas to please ask um, and interact. Hello everyone. Um I just want to say that as how I got in contact with Dridha. I actually when I was younger I was very interested in art but then um I had to basically start my work in my father's business so slowly slowly that flame kind of like went out but then i seen on instagram that he was doing these amazing art i went to his website like if he was staying and he had workshops but they weren't online so and then you guys had this collaboration together that you're going to do a workshop together so that really inspired me that maybe i can get back into this art again and really give it another chance because i enjoy art so much and uh, especially the traditional art i also live in india so when you go to these in temple you see the art on the wall and everything it's very beautiful so my question would be is that because i can give a very huge amount of my time to the craft what are the, some of the tips you can give me that will kind of like help me even though i can only give a very small portion of my day to practicing art thank you nitai funny thing enough i know nitai since he was quite small um i know his, his whole family uh we go back quite a long ways and um 
yeah so i'm really happy to see his interest in the arts so that's very nice um yeah so that's a very good question actually because a lot of us have you know this sort of a dilemma that we have either our work you know where we have to give a lot of our time to work you know day job and things like that and then we have our passion which could be anything art music dance whatever it is so um i do get that question quite often and I, i've been through experiences where i've had to actually practically give up my art and just work a day a day job um but i guess what keeps keeps that art alive or your interest in the art is is practice um so whatever little time that you do get if you have that interest um even if it's just 10 minutes a day um just sit down with a pencil make a sketch uh, find something that you like um and try to try to sketch that um and also what's very important is to find inspiration to other art or to other artists um you're in india so go to temples uh see the art that they have meet other artists if you're anywhere near some artist um try to meet them talk to them ask them questions um just as much time as you can get extra time beside your your regular um your day work um just dive into it as much as you can so um i try to practice that as much as i can on a daily basis and sometimes it's hard you don't get any time at all and sometimes you get a few minutes so take advantage as much as you can you know uh that's wonderful thank you nitai and uh, let's uh, now uh, welcome sangamitra uh first of all it's an absolute honor to meet and learn from you mr gore thank you so much for this opportunity and thank you uh, deepthi as well for bringing this workshop where we can learn from him um i am from india but i live in seattle right now just like deepthi and deepthi um and my question to you is uh, do you have uh, a favorite project that you have done so far and if yes then why is it your favorite and uh, how long did it take you to complete that that's uh, thank you for your question and and welcome it's very nice to have you here yeah i i would say i had to um you know create this uh, parvati temple which was in in west bengal um it wasn't really something that i i expected i would have to do and um I mean I didn't expect I would have to do the whole project I was asked to just design the murti of Parvati and because the Parvati was quite an unusual form it's her meditating um she's doing this tapasya you know and it's kind of rare to find that there's only like one or two in India so and it was in West Bengal in this sort of village area and it was quite uh, an unusual combination of of, of different things um and i wasn't a, i wasn't trained to be an architect but i was asked to also design the temple and then there we were doing something with the terracotta which was also something very new to me um and i was working with local artists there was a language barrier but because it was such a like i guess complicated project it also made it very interesting because there was always some excitement there was always something new happening or we were going to new places meeting different artists and the project actually took around 3 years i think to complete and that was because of the many uh we had a lot of obstacles along the way there was <laughs> many different like in india sometimes you know they say it's going to be done in a month and it takes a year so we had all these kind of obstacles but um uh i think after that there were a lot of changes that happened in that village where we we built this temple um and someone that someone actually predicted it that uh, after this temple would be built there would be some some changes in that area there would be more people that would be attracted because of parvati's um blessing if you could say you know so after that project i think we we saw a lot of things that happened that were quite amazing and and divine so i would say that was probably one of the most exciting projects i worked on for sure <laughs> thank you so much i look forward to the workshop Thank, Thank you. you. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. And Sujata, do you want to uh, ask your? Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, uh, everyone. Hi, Gorik. Hi, Dipti and Dipti. I'm very happy to join this, and I was uh, totally stunned that I had won uh, a free workshop. Uh, 
Ah, thanks to you guys. I'm Sujata. I'm from Singapore. I'm I'm an Indian, but I live in Singapore, and it's ten uh, thirty in the night for me. So uh, I did ask Gorik, and he did tell me that I would have to refer to Shilpa Sastra to get the Parimanas, and he also told me that he used Navratala Parimana uh, as the measure for the gods and goddesses he was drawing, and. I have been a major admirer of his work ever since I discovered his uh, Instagram handle. Very happy to join all of you here. Yeah? Um, I think all of you have covered a lot of. I don't think there's anything more to ask, uh, except that I'm just eagerly waiting for the uh, workshop. Even though it's going to be 2 a.m. for me, I do hope to be able to wake up and attend the workshop. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sujata. Yeah, I remember you. Uh, our conversation. Um, yeah, that was quite. Uh, it it was nice to to hear someone ask about the uh, the Shilpa Shastras and and the Navatala. I don't get that very often, you know. <laughs> They usually just ask, "How do you learn?" You know, the traditional art, and um, because you mentioned about like you know Tanjore painting and Kerala Kerala mural painting, um, they also sort of touch a little bit on the Shilpa Shastra, but. Um, A lot of these uh, more contemporary uh, styles of traditional art use more the style than than the measurements. They don't use so much of the measurements. I think something that um, even when I was starting out um, to find information about it, especially the Shilpa Shastras, is quite um, quite limited. But now, since we have internet and you know uh, we can do these online workshops and share whatever knowledge we have, um, it's quite a blessing. You know. I think. That. Thank you, Gorik. Thank you. See you soon, huh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> thank you so much, Sujata, and thank you uh, to all the winners. Congratulations! And uh, I know you're all eagerly looking forward to the workshop. Uh, so, and I am too. And uh, uh, thank you for being with us. And that brings us actually to the end of part two of the interview. um i can't tell you uh, what a fulfilling experience this was for me and i know it is the same for everybody uh, who will be watching this uh thank you so much uh, dridavrata for uh, you know spending your time uh, with us and patiently answering all our questions and mm-hmm. sharing uh, so much uh, information and fascinating stories uh, of your travels and uh, what you learned with us uh and i want to really thank uh, deepthi from the bottom of my heart for thinking of me uh to be a part of this experience um and to for bringing uh this workshop to all of us uh, thank you so much dhrirata today's uh, session was so enlightening it was it just uh, literally opened the floodgates of information and curiosity now and uh, i'm sure it is going to uh, motivate people to dig deeper and know more about the traditional arts that we practice back in india and we are really enamored by the person that you are and now so looking forward to the workshop yeah thank you both uh, also for for organizing this and um, yeah making it so uh, easy for me to uh, just come and teach and share my knowledge um, and you know thank you to all the uh, the sponsors also and I'm really looking forward to it, and actually quite nice to see the amount of enthusiastic people who want to learn this art. Um, I actually really didn't expect that, to be honest, because um, nowadays, you know, there's a lot of things that people want to learn more modern, you know, like technology and things like that. So to see so much interest in traditional arts, it's, it gives a lot of hope, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So once again, the workshop is on March fifth and twelfth, the first two Saturdays uh, of the month, and uh, uh, the time is ten to eleven thirty in Pacific Standard Time in the morning AM. So please do check your local times if you are joining us from anywhere else uh, outside of the state of Washington. Uh, please do check the ensure you check the uh, local time and please tune in. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.